All right, everybody, this let's have a chat with, with Robert from Rides by Camp. Camp. This is brilliant, and not only is this ride looking absolutely awesome, Robert is a fellow Aussie. He's from Queensland, and he does awesome stuff. And one day, pretty much sooner than later, every time I go back to Sydney, I do go to Queensland. My brother lives there. I have to go to the shop and check it out. But before I do that, let's have a chat with Robert. Robert, how's it going? Good, yourself? Good, nice to meet you. Yeah, Come nice over here, you. mate. And Trent? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We've got two Aussies here, builder and owner. That's yep. correct. Well, before anything else, how are you guys enjoying SEMA? Yeah, it's great. SEMA's great. This is the first time for me. Me too. And it's the first day today. I missed yesterday. But yeah, absolutely brilliant. Love it. It's overwhelming, isn't it? It is. It's great. Yeah. And my family was here yesterday and they loved it too. So it was, nice. it's, it's about 30 of us come from Australia. So we're having a really good time. Yeah. What a Keeping the economy going. Plane yeah. at that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it good fun. Yeah. yeah. Now, first time here. First of all, how many times did you get lost? Oh, I've been lost all the time. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've found my way yet. <laughs> that makes me feel so much more better because I've been getting lost last time. Trent, you're the owner, and Robert. Before anything else, tell us about rides with uh, rides with Cam. Rides by Cam. So we're in Queensland, Australia. We are, it's a family business, got my three sons that work there. Um, and we basically just build muscle cars from start to finish. Start to finish, all muscle cars? Well, I mean, we build anything, Mine. but prim primarily we build muscle cars, yeah. Nice. And Trent, what did you hand yeah, over to Robert and how many years ago? I've known Rob for a fair while. We had another project going, which we're about to start work on again. Yep. Um, and hopefully we might be back here next year with that project. But Rob, what appealed to me with Rob and Rise by Cam and his boys working on it, number one, which I love watching, um, was the fact that I could send a car to one person yeah. and get it done from start to finish. In Australia, it's very hard to find that. But Rob can do basically from start to finish, whether it's the paint, interior, electric, motor, whatever, he can do the whole lot in-house. Wow, that's So that's amazing. what appealed to me. So I think we've got about a five or six-year relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And it's going to be a lot There's longer now. More to go. So, yeah. You know, Trent, you brought up that it, it is hard to find a one-stop shop in Australia when it comes to the hot rods, Very when it comes hard. to restorations. Yeah. And in the States, you lot need to understand how lucky you are that there is so many buildings. That's correct, yeah. And there is so many shops, because yeah. it's not like that across the world. No, no. and I think that the, the situation is that I'm lucky enough to probably have the opportunity to put a car in any shop in the world, yeah. but I still choose to have it at the Gold Coast yeah. with Rise by Cam because it's close to home and we have a relationship yes. as opposed to being across the other side of the world. And I think that you know what Rise by Cam do is as good, if not better, than what I'd get in the States. You know what, I absolutely love that you've mentioned that because I do have very few Australian followers and to my Aussie friends that I always bump into at the car shows, so many of them do bring their cars over here. But maybe next time, instead of over the seas, go across the states, across the yes. um, states and territories over to Queensland because Robert, you've got a killer machine behind you. Yeah, thank you. Let's have a look, what have you got? So, well, I'll let the owner tell you what it is. Okay. Basically, we've got the 1970 Barracuda. Yep. Um, we took it on probably five years ago. Okay. Um, and what was the condition originally? It had some work done to it, mm -hmm. um, some modifications and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but from there, we just changed the whole program. So we threw it out the door and started again. And Rob and I sat down and did you tear it all the way down? Basically, yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's been every nut and bolt. Everything's been you know fiddled and stuff like that. But we got in the end, we got what we wanted. We had to battle through COVID. It was very hard through yes, COVID. Of course. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, so originally we had so Charlie Hutton custom made this colour for us. Yeah. From uh, you know who Charlie Hutton yeah. is? Yeah. So. I told him the brief on the colour and then he basically made the formula, sent it to us in Australia and we sprayed it out and showed it to Trent and Trent was happy with it. And then originally Charlie was going to fly over and me and Charlie were going to paint it together. Um, and then COVID hit and locked the doors in Australia and no one was allowed in or out. It was so very, very hard. we had to work yeah. out. We, we, we won't talk about that. Yeah. yeah. No. So we had was, to work another plan out experience. on the car and then I ended up painting the whole thing myself um, in the same process that Charlie wanted it done or would have done it himself so that we could still basically present you a Charlie Hutton colour, custom yeah. colour. So 
but yeah. you're still able to pull it off, Robert. Yes, like, right. and, yeah. and, and you did it so well. The Barracuda, 1970 Barracuda, there is hardcore fans of well, the Barracuda. Yes. Well, I, had the I think we know that. <laughs> the, the person that actually owned it before me that was starting to work on it, I got a phone call one day from a mate of mine that's actually here today, yep. and he said, you need to buy this car. And I didn't even know what it was. He goes, yep. and then he said, it's the Barracuda 1970. And it's I, like, yeah, I bought I'll it. Get that it. was yep. it, yeah. <laughs> And then look what's come there. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so let's walk us through it. What have you guys I'll done? I'll let Rob walk you through it. Okay. So basically, we we decided to just redesign everything that we sort of had with the original car that we got given. So we, we basically chopped out pretty much most of the engine bay and then started again. Trent uh, supplied us with a Dodge NASCAR engine. So that's actually a NASCAR motor that's in it. Um, and then we just designed in our shop uh, all the custom-made sheet metal that you see here. There's a lot of beautiful custom yeah. work here, just in the engine bay. I mean, it almost looks fake. It, I don't know about fake, but it just it looks it's brilliant. It looks futuristic. Yeah. Well, what what our achievement was with the car, what our goal in mind was that we didn't want to take anything away from the Barracuda's shape and the you know the design of that car because it's it's and a we can, traditional we can muscle see that. car. So. But can obviously in here, here we have. In my opinion, and I'm sorry for interrupting, but I have to do this because even here inside the engine compartment with the customizations you've done up with the sheet metal here, you've got the shape of the Barracuda like coming yep. out. Can, can, we, can I say that? Yeah. Check this out, everyone. Love the design here. So you can see the gold we've sort of used as our hero color which is primarily from the wheel choice that we, we ended up picking on the car. So we thought we'd take the gold into the engine bay just to keep that featured colour going. Again, it's a very different gold. Yeah. It's almost like a rose gold, but not quite. Robert, how much input did Trent have in the design of this? Well, I mean, we designed most of the build, but everything we ran by Trent. So yeah. it was a joint effort between the both of us um, to come up with the ideas. But as you can see in the interior of this car, it's fairly different to what you'd see in a normal. Wow. OK, wow. It's all sheet metal. It's, it doesn't end. There's no seams. This is clean. This is very clean. So we've got clean. a custom handmade sheet metal dashboard that's all painted in the matte PPG paint. Again, and futuristic. Yeah, very and futuristic. the floor as well. Like, it's all steel with the leather pads. Wow. Where did this idea come from to do the entire floor, everything, I mean, in steel? Um, I don't know. I like challenging myself at the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Making things a little bit difficult. I mean, we could have put carpet on this thing and finished it in quarter of the time, but but know, it wouldn't have looked. No, it wouldn't have looked anything have looked like so this. Different. You know, is this how many different pieces are joined together? Here? Oh, I wouldn't even know. Wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to tell know, you. But, well, you know what I can Lots. tell you? It looks like one piece. That's yeah. That's what the whole idea was. That that everywhere you looked, you couldn't see a seam. Wow. Which makes it very hard. You look at this, everybody, and you think it's all one piece. And I am concentrating here on the floor of the Barracuda, but we're going to walk around to the driver's side as we check out the back as well. Absolutely magnificent. And it's a one-stop shop right by Cam. Do you do the interiors as well? Yeah, we do the interiors you in house as well. You do the interiors. Now, let's put it out there because so many shops and builders, the interiors do get certain somewhere else. But yeah. you do the paint and the interiors. And Everything is done in-house except for the actual engine building. Mm -hmm. uh, we have contractors to do that. Okay. And But other than that, everything else is done in-house. We have wow. a paint shop, we have a body shop, fabrication. We actually fabricate our own parts. Uh, we make our own componentries, we make our own front ends. And wow. um, yeah, we have a trim shop as well. I have to tour your shop. Yeah. You know, I, I have to do that because it's... An Australian builder for starters, and I've been touring all these other shops, so I yep. gotta get my butt over there next time I'm in Sydney. But let's have a quick walk around here. So, as you can see, the themes carried on in the boot or the trunk. There's no 
There's nowhere where the car finishes, it's all seamless. And wow. everything that you need to get to, as you can see, is just in behind bolt-in panels that we've built. Wow. So everything's still accessible that we need to get to. It's just everything that's not is all, you know, seamless. Wow. You can see we've got some pretty nice wheels on the back, nice deep dish. Very deep. What are the sizes of those? <laughs> They're a 22 by 12 inch. 22 by 12. And the whole idea is we wanted to make sure we had a lot of dish, a lot of depth. The stance of the Barracuda is one of the things that people absolutely yep. love. And you've done that so well. While customizing and restoring these, you've kept to its true love that people love. Why do they love the Barracuda? And it's because of it's, the stance. Uh, look, I think the body shape, the body lines on yep. the Barracuda are just... You know, I think it's probably one of the traditional muscle cars of America, like a 69 Camaro. And the 69 Camaro has nice, sharp, crisp sort of body lines like this as well. There's so many cars out there that have the, you know, the same sort of aspect in a muscle car. But I think traditionally a Barracuda is, you know, pretty sought after. It's very sought after, in my opinion. The interior looks in great on the inside. Would Trent mind if I went and sat inside at all? No, that should be fine, just... Got to check and make sure. All right, because I have to sit in there. It looks very, I don't know, it almost doesn't feel like a car. Yeah, no, it's comfortable. <laughs> hey, New Eve, can I get you to hold this? Because I really want to have a seat inside this. And um, and once inside, we well, can have a look at the interiors. And Robert, you can walk me through it. But this is very different to everything else that we have been seeing at SEMA lately. And I think the floor panels have a big part in that. Yeah, I think it's a bit different too. Wow. Okay. It's very different. It almost doesn't feel like a car. <laughs> in a good way. Yeah. In a good way. Because if you're going to restore a classic, you've got to do something that's going to just make it stand out yep. and be different. And you have achieved that. I mean, all right, let's get in here, come, come up close. So when we drive this, we have special mats, obviously, that go on the floor to yep. protect the floor. Just for people out there that are thinking that we put our feet straight on that. And I'm gonna make sure that I clean that out for all my Barracuda fans out there. I will not be dirtying this beautiful car, but let's have a look here at the dash. Again, very futuristic, very digital. Talk to me about it. Uh, what are the dash I'm looking at? So it's Where's a Dakota phone? Digital instrument cluster, and it's one of their universal clusters. Um, I still like the idea of the needle gauges and then the LCD screen as well. So I kind of it's a mixture of both, and it still keeps a little bit of the traditional needle gauges, but gives you the digital readout as the well. The best of both worlds. Yeah, it is. The best of both worlds. Wow. Now the shifters, you're probably looking at the shifters and thinking, well, what's going on there? There's two shifters, I just <laughs> noticed. <laughs> so it's a, it's a vertical gate shifter, so the little, the little stick is for reverse, and the taller stick is for the gears. It's a four-speed, which you have to pull the little lever up in the front to get it into first gear. And then from there, you just pull back, go forward, pull back again. Now that NASCAR engine over there that we've um, you put in it, how much has it been modified? What's the power on it now? Uh, not much. It's about 900 horsepower. But it's a high Not ribbon. much. Not <laughs> much. <laughs> now we get an understanding of what muscle car means to you. Yeah. 900 horsepower is not much. Well, not well. They, what I mean is the engine hasn't been modified much. I mean they're yeah. pretty pretty high horsepower, high revving engine that, anyway. That's what they usually come yeah. with. Okay, I didn't know that. Now you've got two screens here. So the iPad in the middle is not on at the moment, but it controls the airbag suspension. Oh, wow. And then obviously the other one's just for radio, uh, LCD screen. Just got to have a look at everyone. The headliner complete with the interiors. I walked past this yesterday and I said, wow, I got to come back and check this out. And I'm so glad that I did because I have a few more questions for Trent. Yep. But let me get out. I know I don't want to, but I will. <laughs> Niamh, can you take this one? Yeah. Let's um, make sure. Yeah, it's actually a good seating position. It actually and is. And the steering column's all adjustable anyway, so... 
And then when we drive it, we have special mats that we've made, so you, you, know, you don't feel like you've got to hold your feet up. What's the ride height? Is, would that be the ride height? That's, that's aired out at the moment, so when you turn the car on, it just comes up. It goes up a little yeah. bit more. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, let's, um, let's go over to Trent. Oh, sorry. <laughs> i got to get used to that. Excuse me. <laughs> You're up again. <laughs> hey, man. Nine hundred horsepower, Trent. Where are you driving this Barracuda? I'll drive it wherever I want to drive it, and there's no problem whatsoever. Nine hundred horsepower is a, a little bit of power, but not what we're really used to. We we're into drag racing and stuff like okay. that, so we're used to five, six thousand horsepower, but. Um, but street, but in regards to legality, Australian laws, can you take this to the supermarket on the streets? Oh, you could take it to the supermarket. I'm not sure how the police would react and stuff like that. But you know, we would drive it. But it's it's too nice to drive. Of course. Yeah, we put of so course. much effort, and Rob and the boys have put so much effort into it yeah. that it'd be a shame to ruin it in any way, whether yeah. a door opens on it or something like that, or stone chips and that. It's a show car, but it can be driven. It can be driven. My whole point in that, of course, this is not going to be a daily driver, everybody, is that unfortunately with the laws in Australia, you know... Very strict. With the skill that's involved in here and the talent and then, of course, your passion and having a car like this, the laws are very strict. Yes, yeah, very they strict. Are. And I mean, right, the other yeah. thing that is, you know, you, you spend all this... In the very beginning, I see it all the time that with customers and even myself. You think, I'm just going to drive this every day yeah. or on the weekends or whatever. But what stops you is not that... You're looking at the car and you think, oh, wow, it's too nice to drive. It's more so that the person that's in the standard car that's worth $10,000 or something yeah. doesn't that thinks it. that they've yeah. just hit you and it's just a normal car and it's a car accident. But to hit something like this is just a nightmare to fix. Yeah. So that's what really stops you and stops me from driving on a normal everyday street. One of the questions that I get all the time is, um, what is the... Um, hot rod scene, what is the car culture like in Australia, and it definitely exists, it's there, especially in Melbourne, as you would know as well, but not so much to this extent that it is here in The, the comparison America. is probably the same as America, apart from the fact that our population is a lot less. Yeah. So we're about a tenth of what America does yeah. in population, oh, but we have a strong car scene, and we have some really nice like, motor X, um, yeah. some of that stuff like that for our shows. Um, which are getting better and better every year. Oh, good. Uh, and higher high profile cars. And there's still people spending big dollars on cars yes. and, and getting these high profile cars. But they're few and far between, obviously, because when you come to America, the population is just yeah, population. 10 times what we have. Yeah, that's the big difference. Um, with yourself now, some of the, I guess, I don't know if that would call it rumours that I hear sometimes about restoring a classic in Australia is um, there's some crash testing that has to happen in order to police legislation? No, not really. No. Only if you modify the chassis or put a custom yeah. chassis, okay. then you have to do an engineering torsion beam test. Yeah. And that's the biggest difference between Australia and America is that everything we do on this car yeah. has to be looked at by an engineer. Yeah. So we can't not we can't modify anything to do with the car's chassis, suspension or anything like that without getting it inspected and then plated by the engineer so you know that it's road safe. Because if you did that, and what makes it road safe, crash testing your build once or twice. Well, no, the crash testing's done by the original builders of the Barracuda, oh, the right? Builders, yeah. So, but if you were hypothetically to bring a car in the country that hasn't never been crash tested, then yeah, you probably would have to go through, through something like that. that yes. But not with any of this sort of stuff. No, we yeah. just have to go through engineering, which is probably more stringent than an, than really it what, it's what a crash. Strict. It's it's really hard to get. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to get it 100% road legal, yeah. but it's important too, because if something happens, you want to know it's right. Yes, yes. Well, engineering aside, for somebody who does the builds, and you, for me, the restoration, the customization of cars that happens, hand-built, where someone, the builder like yourself, is looking at it every inch of the mm. car, like no one would do that better than yourself. And then on top of that, Trent, you've got the customer here who's paying, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into a car. Yeah. Obviously, it's going to be safe. It's not going to be something that you're going to spend this much money on just to have it and not be um, safe. Well, that's the whole reason, like I said before, is about putting in a shop that we trust, yeah. number one, and getting that car done from start to finish with one shop. Because when you tend to shop it around, especially in Australia, 
you might deal with 10 different trades or whatever it might be. They all tend to blame each other or whatever it is. Yeah. But going to Rob, put the car there, mate, just finish it. You know, it's just those two That's hands right. that you can blame. He picks compliment. the phone up, he gives me a call, yeah. we talk about it. I drop down, have a look at it every now and then, and that's what I've, we've, that's what we've got now. Beautiful car, yeah. Love it, absolutely love it. And originally, our shop wasn't a one-stop shop. It was just, it's been open now for thirty for about thirty years. Thirty years. So I started it in my um, early, or before I was twenty, and um, originally it wasn't it wasn't like I said a one-stop shop. But over the years, like Trent just said, I just got sick of dealing with the people in the other trades not doing their job properly, I get the car back and it's not right. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, you know, this is just a joke. So what we did is we expanded and we put on staff where we needed to to handle, like we've got a, a suspension builder that builds all our front ends and all that now. And, you know, I do the body and paint and so does one of my sons and then one of my other sons is mechanical. So now we, see, when we build the car, the most important thing is the next step. Yeah. So the steel guy needs to think of the body guy the body guy needs to think of the interior guy and the interior guy and the wiring guy need to think of each other as well and that doesn't happen that's when you shop it around yeah. yeah that's yeah. The, that's yeah. what doesn't happen when you shop it around yeah so yeah and then you at the end result is a perfect car and and what we see a lot in our country is the cars half of them never get finished because the owners end up running out of either interest in the car or money because it's been shopped around so many times wow. and it's just not right and they never have to start again Wow. So. Well, thank you. It's good to have you, you there, honestly, to um, to keep this going and to know that there's a place that's an absolute one-stop shop for anybody um, in Australia, no matter what state you are in, Queensland, right by Cam. You have to check it out. Check it out on Instagram and on Facebook. Cam website, with a K. K with a, Cam with a K. Thank you. <laughs> But absolutely awesome. I appreciate this. Thank Congratulations you. Thank again. You very much. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Rob. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome.